Hi, I'm so excited to share point number 11 in the 12 Principles of Leadership of Jesus Christ, the world's greatest leader. We're going to be talking about the Word of God today. Jesus knew the Word of God. He memorized the Word of God. He spoke the Word of God. He lived the Word of God. Of course, you can say because Jesus was the living Word, John 1.1, 1, 1, John 1.14, 1, 1 John 1, Jesus was the Word of God. But it was more than that. He was not just the Word of God, but he memorized the Word of God. He knew it because he studied the Word of God. He memorized it. He learned it the same way we learn it, because he had already laid aside his privileges of deity back in Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5 and 6. He never leaned on the fact that he was the Word to know the Word. So he learned the Word the same way we do, and that is that he would read it and study it and memorize it. Now, there is something about the Word that is different than even prayer because prayer produces power, but the Word produces authority. So if you have no knowledge of the Word, uh, you have no authority in God. That's plain and simply the fact. So God is calling us today to really, really know this Word. I had the benefit as a child. I heard a man preach. I probably was maybe 12 years of age. And I heard this preacher, and he would memorize chapters and chapters and chapters of the Word of God. He so inspired me that as a, as, a, as a child, I would walk to school memorizing the Word of God. I would carry this Word, I would memorize it, till I memorized chapters and chapters and chapters, and I do it to this day. I don't just read it, I memorize it, I ponder it, I meditate upon it. Uh, Psalm 1 says if we meditate upon the Word of God, we're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth its fruit in its season. Everything we will do prospers, according to Psalm chapter number 1. So Jesus is walking along here uh, after, this is, this is post-ascension, uh, uh, post-resurrection, and he's talking to two men after, uh, on the way to Emmaus, on the road to Emmaus, which is not far from Jerusalem, uh, on resurrection day. These two, two individuals walking along. And uh, he says to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Now he's quoting uh, we read it in Luke's Gospel, chapter number 24, verse 25 on. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all of the scriptures concerning himself. Can you imagine? And then whenever he uh, just disappeared, vanished from sight, after they had had their bread, uh, broke bread together, then their eyes were open, they recognized him, and he disappeared. And they then turned to each other and said, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures? You know, if you just open the scriptures to somebody, the word will do its work. The word is eternal. It will not return void, Luke 15. The word is eternal. The work is sharp, powerful, Hebrews 4.12. The word, the word, the word, the word. If we could just get this word in us, the word, the word, the word. The word is life-giving. The word is sustaining. It created the universe, the word. So then, again, the same chapter, but later that night, he's going to be appearing to the disciples. Same chapter, Luke, chapter number 24. And he talks to the disciples, and when he says this, he shows them his hands and his feet. And uh, then he, verse number 44, Luke 24, 44, he said, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. He is talking about the entire Old Testament. He knew the entire thing. Whenever Jesus stood up in Galilee in Nazareth at the beginning of his ministry and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he was quoting from Isaiah 61. All of the way through the Bible, Jesus continually quoted from the Old Testament. Whenever, whenever he uh, reference was made by the Pharisees about a question, he would then tell them what the scripture said. So they thought that they were experts in the law, but they weren't like Jesus. Because Jesus not only knew the word of God, he lived it, he breathed it, he walked it. We cannot have authority in our ministries unless we too make ourselves people of the word of God. And this, we, we need to spend more time in this than we do commentaries. We need to take this word, eat it, digest it, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It must be inside us. When he was being tempted in the wilderness, the only thing that Jesus retorted as it responded to the, to the, to the questions of Satan were these, it is written. He didn't say anything else. He didn't say anything else, but it is written, and he quoted from Deuteronomy 8, and he quoted from Deuteronomy 6. We need to know not only that it's written, we need to know where it's written so we can speak with authority. Get in the Word, or you won't have the authority you need to look like Jesus. Awesome.
Okay.